It is my theory that while imperfect, the sequel Star Wars trilogy offers a new generation of Star Wars fans a message of hope and identity, something desperately needed among the youth today. What's up you nerds and welcome back to Josh Speaks, where you can hear epic music and engage with culture's iconic stories. As we explored in my Black Panther Matters video, films and stories are embedded with themes that shape culture. And while I recognize that The Rise of Skywalker is likely not everyone's favorite film, I couldn't help but watch the movie and think a little bit more deeply about it. That's why in this video I'm going to share with you why I believe Episode 9, though imperfect, offers a new generation of Star Wars fans an important message of hope and identity in an increasingly purposeless culture. So, if you love Star Wars even just a little, please strap yourselves in and journey with me to a galaxy far, far away. To appreciate any message given in The Rise of Skywalker, we need to take a little walk down memory lane. The original Star Wars series occurred in the late 1970s, giving us A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and The Return of the Jedi. Before A New Hope was released, critics predicted the film would flop and that audiences would likely forget it. Yet we know that wasn't the case. George Lucas ushered people throughout the world into a new fan fiction that made its stamp on Western culture, probably forever. And if you think with me just a little bit more, you'll also recall that A New Hope was released nearly two years after the Vietnam War, a very polarizing experience for older generations. The country was torn apart by this war and desperately needed something to bring it back together. Star Wars didn't necessarily unite the country politically, but it did give audiences a common story to rally behind, something people could enjoy together. Why was Star Wars successful then? Well, when you think about the structure of the original series, it's very straightforward. A galaxy torn between the Empire and the Rebellion. The former led by Darth Vader and the Emperor, and the latter led by a host of our favorite characters. Luke Skywalker, Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and many, many more. The lines between friend and foe are clear in the series. The good guys prevail in the New Hope, experience defeat in The Empire Strikes Back, but ultimately win in The Return of the Jedi. See anything yet? Yep, the original series reflects a very basic understanding of the culture it was born into. People wanted clarity, a common foe to rally against. It could even, maybe, be possible to say that the older generations grew up with a very basic understanding that there are the good guys, and then there are the bad guys. Not an exact parallel to Star Wars, but it's at least worth thinking about. Fast forward to the prequel trilogy with The Phantom Menace, The Attack of the Clones, and The Revenge of the Sith, and we see yet a similar theme. A galaxy divided by the Republic, led by the Jedi, and the Separatists, led by the Sith. However, this time, the trilogy includes one new player, the Senate. Now, what better way to get audiences to love Star Wars than politics, am I right? If you think about it, this is why the Clone Wars TV show is arguably more enjoyable among Star Wars fans than the prequel trilogy, because it focuses on the battles of the Clone Wars and the character development of beloved figures like Anakin, Obi-Wan, and my personal favorite, Ahsoka. Okay, maybe I'm a huge fan of the TV series, and Season 7 is coming out soon and I'm really excited. But back to our original thought. The prequels repeat similar themes to the original Star Wars trilogy, with the added player of the Senate, right? And it can be argued that the prequel trilogy is an extension of what older generations believed, but it adds the muddle of politics, dividing fans across the spectrum. Many fans love the prequels, many dislike them. Why? I think largely because the United States during the late 90s and early 2000s transitioned in its ideals as a country, becoming split by party members, politics, and new ways of cultural change. With this context in mind, fast forward to The Force Awakens in 2015, and we have a new generation of Star Wars fans entering the picture. The Force Awakens takes place 30 years after The Return of the Jedi, story-wise and film release-wise, and it does something different than what the previous trilogies do. It gives us the First Order and the Resistance, but this time, characters on both sides more clearly struggle with good and evil, specifically Rey and Kylo Ren. Unlike the previous series where the good guys are the good guys and the bad guys are the bad guys, we wonder as the audience throughout each of these new films how Kylo Ren will solve his inner conflict and how Rey will deal with her identity crisis. Moreover, this new Star Wars series blends the old with the new. We have 
other new characters like Poe, Finn, and BB-8 while witnessing the return of Han, Chewbacca, Leia, Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, and R2-D2. This is so cool because it's a definite reflection of the current cultural condition. People of all ages and backgrounds in a new time in history are trying to figure out how to move forward together. When fans went to watch The Force Awakens in theaters, audience members ranged from all ages and each of these audience members are represented in the film. You have Rey, Finn, and Kylo all wrestling with their past and who they are as people, a genuine struggle among younger people. Poe is committed to the resistance and the ways of old, and Leia leads courageously with an undying hope in the new generation. This is similar to folks in older generations today who believe in the future of America. And then there are Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, individuals who lost hope, who gave up on the future, and have to learn to re-enter the fight. There are so many people in America today who have lost hope and hold so tightly to the past that they cannot connect with the new generation. Han Solo must face his fear of losing his son and pursue him even to death, believing there is still some good in him. Luke is afraid of himself, so much so that he isolates himself from the world. However, he eventually recognizes his folly and returns with hope for the resistance. He ultimately sacrifices himself in order that the new freedom fighters may live to fight another day. It's ultimately this sacrifice that gives our new favorite characters the boost they need against the Emperor. So, with all this in mind, how does all of this tie into the Rise of Skywalker, you're probably asking? Well, even with its problems, Episode 9 gives audiences a vivid picture of culture today. People divided and desperate to know who they are. In the film, we see the struggle of the current generation of young people, Gen Z, and their desire for purpose. The Rise of Skywalker tells us that people do not have to be defined by who they were, who their parents are, or what their circumstances are or have been. Whereas the original and prequel trilogies established clear sides of good and evil, this final conflict wrestles with internal battles that each character must face. Kyle Ren overcomes the darkness within him, saying no to fear and sacrificing himself for Rey. Finn embraces his past and chooses to fight when the odds are stacked against him. And while Rey discovers she is the granddaughter of the greatest villain in the Star Wars franchise, she chooses the light and embraces the name of her adopted family, Skywalker. You see, the hope found in The Rise of Skywalker is that one can overcome through the strength of something bigger than oneself, through the people around them. Rey experiences the pull towards the dark side and wrestles with her past and her identity. Everyone around her is telling her who she is, so much so that she tells Finn, everyone keeps telling me that they know me, but I'm afraid no one does. People in Gen Z today are saying the same things wrestling with what gives them purpose and meaning, whether it is in other people, relationships, wealth, power, gender, sex, race, ethnicity, and so many other things. So, what is the answer found in The Rise of Skywalker? It's simple. Community. We find hope, meaning, and purpose in the people and values that transcend us. The ending of this film is the triumph of people across the galaxy coming together to fight a common foe, and they win. As we see in the final battle, the galaxy as a whole, with people from every race, background, and planet, unite to fight the Emperor. They are united by a common foe, and ultimately in their sincere hope as a community. Now, there's a lot of discussion in society today to teach young people that their strength is supposedly within themselves. And while healthy self-talk is important, it's incomplete, because without our friends beside us, we may lose sight of who we really are. How satisfactory of an answer Episode 9 provides us is a question worth discussing. Is community alone really enough, or is there something more that we are missing? Yet at the end of the day, I do believe that this film pries at what society is wrestling with, asking us the hard questions and pondering what really brings us together as people. While much more could be said, I'll end my video here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I'd really appreciate that. And as a final thought, I'll leave you with this question. 
Where does your identity lie? May the Force be with you. The Force will be with you.